they keep saying, well, we don't know what these are, but all of a sudden there's UFOs everywhere lately. Have you been keeping up with this? Mm, I've seen a little bit of it. There's a bunch of like, so for those that don't know, UFO stands for Unidentified Flying Object. Mm -hmm. First it was like, nah. And now the government's like, all right, that definitely was something we can't identify or definitely was a UFO, blah, blah. So here's, here's my thing. Is this hypocritical or reasonable? Is it hypocritical for the government to just be like, nope, nope, nope. And then all of a sudden be like, nah, yeah, they are. Or is it reasonable for them to hide it? And then now in 20, because it's, it's easier to hide it in 2009, 2005, mm -hmm. 2010, when there's no 4K, you know what I'm saying? No cameras everywhere. And now it's like, all right, y'all got us. Or yeah, you know, they've been out or we're seeing this, we're seeing that. Is it hypocritical? Reasonable. Mm, no, I think that's hypocritical. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Hypocritical AF Podcast. We are back from a little about a month week hiatus, you know what I'm saying? Month or, yeah, about a month. I would say four weeks. Four weeks. Four weeks or a month, you know what I mean? Yeah. Getting those uh, nerves like wrinkled down and everything, but we back, man. Uh, we back with another special guest right here. If y'all know him, you finna. And if you remember him, I appreciate you for checking back in. We got a return guest, Peasy. Yep. What's up with it, y'all? What's Glad to be it? back, man. Man, it's a pleasure. Come on back with it, you know what I mean? After those 80 shots. <laughs> 81. Oh, 81, yeah. With some too. Don't forget, it was 81 shots of beer with some champagne, I think we was drinking at the end too. It was, we were, we were, what was it? Uh, we did Michelob Boltra, and then I want to say we were drinking some champagne too. You know what's funny too? I actually checked out uh, the homie Bees. Easy Will. Check out his podcast, Bees Easy Will Podcast. Julio was on there, right? And they were talking about it. <laughs> and you know what he told me? Did he, you, were you with them I afterwards? I was with them afterwards. Denny's? Yeah. I didn't know that. <laughs> I didn't know that. He said that, that he threw up afterwards. He had to yak and he threw up a bit. Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, it was, it was, a, it was a fun night. Okay. It was a fun <laughs> one. I don't know what they did afterwards. Like we were just, I'm just responsible for the 81 shots with a little bit of champagne. And apparently it got to him. I felt good. No, yeah, me too. You woke up solid? Yeah. Oh, I, I think we were good. texting too. We were just like, you know, we could have probably did a hundred. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I think because we did the math after it was like, all right, pretty much eighty one shots is basically like a six six pack, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And it's the light beer, so it's like, you know, pretty chill. Yeah, it, it was it wasn't too bad. I thought it was going to be worse. I used to have a uh, one of my football coaches used to tell me that they used to do like hundred shots or something like that. Damn, when he was like when he was in the military. Yeah, yeah. And then I was like. Damn, that sounds crazy. I was in high school learning about all this stuff. I was like, damn, I don't think I'll ever be able to do that in my life. But damn, we're here knocking 81 down. <laughs> 81, yeah. I, I'm telling you, I think the next one we got to do is, uh, I think we got to step it up from Michelob. Maybe go to like a higher percentage one, you know what I'm saying? Maybe the, you know, maybe the Drakes, maybe the... Uh, the IPAs? The IPAs, you know what oh. I mean? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I'm down for it. You know? Hey, man. If it comes to it, what would be the next one? What's the next, like... Like 120 when I get to episode 120? 120, 120, 120 shots, one something, 120 hot, one something. We'll definitely keep that one in the books. We're gonna uh, be in the three digit range though. Now, I know, I'm man. Like, double. fuck, that's what's crazy about it. You know what I mean? And continue on continuing with this one. That's why I was like, I was hesitant. You know what I was thinking of too? I was being like, when I when we as the first episode back, you think, should I count it as like a season? And be like, oh, welcome back for season two or something like that. Mm -hmm. I was thinking about doing that, making it you know, season one was in the wrap, uh, took about a month off. And then being like, this is season two. I, I kind of wanted to start like that. And I was thinking maybe about breaking that down. But then I was like, man, I'm overthinking it. Let's just tell people how it is and, re you know, the realness of everything. Mm. When in reality is I took about a month off unintentionally, like we we're talking about earlier. Unintentionally. It wasn't the plan. I didn't intend to take a month off and everything. But I also feel like it was needed. You know what I'm saying? I yeah. needed a reset, bro. I'm just be honest. I needed a reset. I needed like some time to just kind of sit back and not think about the podcast and not worry about what's next. And at the same time, kind of just enjoy life a bit. You know what I'm saying? Like I got off, wasn't off it completely, but I posting less, wasn't on my phone as much. And um, really just soaking in game and knowledge too, because my last episode I put, I had said like, yo, it, um, like I'm, I want feedback if everybody can give me feedback. And surprisingly, dude, I got like a lot of good stuff, yourself included, mm -hmm. which shouts out to you, which is actually why I'm, I'm incorporating some of this stuff too. You gave me good advice. Um, uh, uh, David gave me good advice. Uh, Don's taking me, uh, good advice. Um, a bunch of the lists, I, I'm missing a few from the top of my head, but a bunch of listeners actually replied to me too. They're like, yeah, you should do this, you should do this. And some people 
were telling me like some things that I kind of already know, you know what I'm saying? But I didn't think that they were going to be into the same thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I'll give you a perfect example. This is like one of the, one of the ones that, that, that people were hitting me about. They go, you know what you should do? More gossip stuff. I was like, okay, I know. I know. Because that's for like, you know, it's cheesemans, you know? Everybody mm-hmm. like wants to cheese me, you know what I mean? So they're telling me like you should do more gossip stuff. And I was like, true. That, I'm definitely down for that. But the problem with doing it or trying to focus it all, all around all that is that it's tough to do when you're by yourself. You know what I'm saying? Because then it's kind of like you're doing reaction videos. Or then it's kind of like you're just talking to yourself the whole time. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I would rather do the, like, if I do the gossip stuff, I'd rather it be like when there's guest orientated ones. You know what I'm saying? That way it could be not just your right. opinion, it could be someone else's too. Yeah, because they could be like, man, what is this fool talking about? Like, there's no, like, you know, good two sides for everything. And also, it's like not so biased from what you think. It's also, you also get another perspective on things too. Right. Which is pretty great. Yeah, so it was it was that one, and then people were hitting me up about um, surprisingly, shockingly, you know what they were telling me? What they were telling me to get into true crime stuff, true crime, like a true crime, because that's like the hot, the popular thing right now. Yeah, um, my sister actually just started a true crime really? podcast. There you go. Yeah. Fuck. That, I mean, because it, so um, I don't know if a lot of people know this or not, but true crime was at like for it's like the besides like Joe Rogan was like the number one genre for podcasting. Mm-hmm. I have no, I had no idea. Literally. Do you listen to any uh, true crime? Uh, there's one that used to be actually a sponsor of the podcast at one time. Um, Military True Crime Military True Crime Podcast. I don't know if they're still around, but mm-hmm. that was one of them. Um, you remember the old school? <laughs> it used to be on Lifetime. Shouts out to y'all if you remember this, but it's called Unsolved Mysteries. I think Do you I remember think that I remember shit? That, yeah. So there was, there was one that... I, that so I'm not going to cap and just be like, this. I listen to it religiously or daily or some shit like that. But every once in a while, like when I finish my lineup, and sometimes where if like I need another one to listen to, I'll I'll tap in with that one. It's like Unsolved Mysteries, the podcast. Bro, <laughs> honestly, I have listened to a couple of different random ones. That's just kind of scary listening to it, bro. I'll be driving to work or something or mm-hmm. like whatever you're doing. You're just, yeah, he grabbed her from the back, stabbed her 20 times. You're <laughs> like, like looking back, you're like, hold on, you're driving. Like, yeah, for real. Hold up. <laughs> I bet. And, it's, and, you know, depending on what time you're driving to, if it's like 2 a.m., yeah. you know what I'm saying? No, I wouldn't listen to it that <laughs> no, late. That's no, a little too scary. That it's like watching a scary movie but <laughs> yeah. with the audio only. Yeah, exactly. No, but yeah, so that, that would surprise me, bro. I didn't know true crime was like a thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, I knew it was a thing, but I didn't know it was like the thing. You know what I'm saying? So people were telling me about that. Another thing that people, because I had to make a suggestion, I was like, "Am I, am I lacking? Like, should I have a permanent?" Because I had, a, I had two people hit me up too about like, "Hey, you know, like, um, you know, just throwing my hat out there." They're like, "Yo, if if, if you're really looking for a co-host and you want something that's serious, like, like hit me up." And I was mm-hmm. like, "Damn, you know that that is ideal." Because when I started this one, ideally, I wanted to have a podcast. I mean, I wanted to have a co-host, but it makes it tough when people have. Like we said, like different lives and different scheduling. You know what I'm saying? Like it had kind of, it, it kind of has to line up, and and on top of that, it's location wise too. Like that's that becomes a factor too. Where is it going to be? Where are we going to record? What is this? What is that? You know what I'm saying? So I had people hit me up about that. So people were just and surprised. I thought people would be like, "Yeah, you definitely need to have someone else because you suck or some shit like yeah. that." You know? No, nah, surprisingly, they were just like, I think you told me too. They're like, I don't think it's more so like a coworker necessarily. But maybe have like a rotating guest or like a people that have been on and just have them on multiple times, multiple times. And I like that idea. I kind of say it, it's kind of like uh, like what ESPN First Take is doing right now. Like you remember it when uh, Max Kellerman uh, took off, when him and Stephen A were having their issues, whatever, and Kellerman took off. Stephen A started just bringing in his homies, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? And was giving them a voice, giving them a platform. And they would rotate. So certain days, it's like Michael Irvin is going to be there to talk about the football stuff on Mondays. Um, maybe uh, Jason Whitlock is going to be there on Wednesday to talk about more football stuff. And then maybe you might have uh, like a uh, former NBA player talk about basketball stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm trying to think of like J.J. Redick, for example. He's like a, one that's always there. Yeah, yeah they'd be doing that. They'd be doing that. Too, like just like random um, players that are retired yeah. already. I'll just bring they them just in. Bring them in. Analysts or whatever. Mm-hmm. But they have like a rotating panel. So I think that would be cool to incorporate right here too. Um, so that's why I did take, and initially I was just like, bro, I got to take about two weeks off to kind of assess everything. I want to do a set dress. And then I did have a plan of how I'm going to change it. I just didn't do it yet. That's on me. I've been busy living, you know what I mean? But I'm changing up a few things with the set dress. But, um, yeah, just incorporating all of that. You know what I'm saying? And that's kind of like the break. 
Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't call it. Well, it is a break from yeah. recording, but yes. you're still working on your podcast and still like trying to enhance everything else. Yeah. So you do need that because if you're just doing the same thing, you're gonna be stuck in the same spot forever. And you mm -hmm. reached out for help, whatever you needed, mm -hmm. and you got those ideas, wrote them down. And, oh, I could do this. I could do that. So you're still working, bro. So yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's exactly it. A break from recording. The process, the dream, the 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 goal is still the same. It's still intact. It's just I took a, a break from actually pressing hit and record. And sometimes you need to build that foundation. And it, it's really cool to get that feedback and to kind of put it in play. You know what I'm saying? Because what's the point of getting the feedback if it's if you're just letting it go one year to the other and you're not doing anything? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like you're not improving with it. It's like you gotta take you gotta bring in that feedback. Um, and also I think one of the biggest things too is scheduling. Now I have structure. Now, okay, I know for a fact, going forward, I'm recording on Sundays, um, whether it be morning, afternoon, or nights. I'm going to try to record. If I book multiple people, it's going to be multiple on Sundays because um, I'm trying to delegate the the times of when I'm recording. I don't want a random Monday or random Tuesday. Now, granted, mind you, it's it's, it's um, guest-based too. So, like, if I have someone coming on and they're like, yo, I can only do Wednesday at this time, then obviously I'm going to do my best to get that person in on, on that time. But Sundays yeah. is when I'm structuring for it, and then throughout the week... It's editing on these days, editing on these days, but relieving so much the stress. I don't want to be up till midnight anymore. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to get up at 4 a.m. to have to uh, get a, uh, a recording in because now um, going forward, I'm starting to get, my plan is, I haven't done it yet, but <laughs> I'm supposed to be doing, uh, I'm supposed to start this February and it's on me, but I'm supposed to be getting up at 5 a.m. to work out now before I even go, you know what I'm saying, start my day and everything. So my plan is 5 a.m. start time to work out. And I don't want to have to get up at four to record before I start working out, before yeah. I start. You know what I'm saying? So it's structured, too, that I'm getting down. Yeah. That's, that's really important, bro. Yeah. All True. those are key factors. Yeah. And the, and the break, too, is it's it's cool. Like I said, break from recording. It's cool, too, because at the same time, um, it was cool to just to live a bit. You know what I'm saying? Like, I had so much stuff happen between... There's so much, that, that, so much changes that are happening right now, so much stuff personally in the family life that's going to be like, that's trending in the great direction. That's like, I just thought about right now, actually over the course of two months, how much has changed. And so those kind of things come into play, but like being present for those moments too. You know what I'm saying? So like maybe getting off the gram as, you know, like talk about earlier, getting off it as much, not having to uh, focus on like, I got to chew the content or do this stuff right now. Taking a break from it and be like, let me just chill for a bit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's hell important, bro. You need to take a break for yourself, too, because, I mean, we're all human, bro. We're not robots. We're, mm -hmm. we're not AIs yet. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> but um, we all have emotions. We all go through shit, and mm -hmm. we all have to um, get back to our foundations and mm -hmm. be able to reestablish what we're doing and who we really are because you get caught up in so much shit, Instagram, social media. Mm-hmm. Trying to please your friends, trying to do so much other things, and yeah. you just forget who you are sometimes. So, man, I tip your hat because that's important, bro. Yeah, and it's also, I didn't even think about this too, but it, I think it's timing wise too, right? So, it's, we just started the new year, you know what I'm saying? So, mm -hmm. it's kind of like how, what direction we wanna step into the new year as, what direction we're trying to shoot, like going forward, you know? Granted, it's February, but during this time where I wanted to take the break and all this stuff, it was literally just the beginning of the year, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, it's kind of like, Oh no! This is the this is the what I should be doing. This is the right move. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's a good thing going forward. Um, but that's just that's everything with me. Like I said, that's podcasting update. That's just what's been going on with me. My hair's gone longer. You know what I'm saying? Like compared to how I used to have it, my shit's getting long. I keep telling myself I'm gonna cut it, and I just haven't. Like I go to the I bro I I'll go to the shop, and I'll just be like ah, I just leave it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, that's how funny because I'm the same thing, but opposite. I really? keep, I like keeping my hair short. That's me. I but, want it. I like my hair short. But like I'm like, it. I'm gonna grow it out. I'm I'm gonna let it grow, like for a month, and then all right, just keep it growing, keep it growing. And once I get to a month, I look at myself in the mirror. I'm like, nah, nah this shit ain't for me. I gotta <laughs> get it. Bro, uh, let me call my barber, bro, because. Yeah. <laughs> Like, I don't like it. I, I can't look at myself with long hair anymore. Like, yeah. I used to have long hair when I was younger, like, yeah. in middle school. But I've been getting tapers, fades yeah. ever since. And I feel like 
It's part of my identity now. That's true. I mean, yeah, could, yeah. I'm so I'm a I'm a short because I have thick ass, bro. Like what you see right now, mind you, I just get out the shower and I had to throw some shit up, but I was gonna wear a hat. That's why I was supposed to get a haircut. I didn't get a haircut. I was supposed to get one last week, and I just never went. And uh, my shit, like if you see it normally, it's like all over. Like my I have thick ass hair, bro. Mm-hmm. It grows outward, so it I don't have. Nice straight hair that goes in one area, you know. You could just comb it to the left and it stays there. No, my shit poofs outward, and then when it poofs, it goes like some of it might go this way, and the other half might go this way. It's like it's a lot, so that's why I like to keep my hair short. But I've been letting it grow just to kind of try some new shit. And I guess I'm I'm just trying trying to see how long I can actually tolerate myself. I want to see how like how this is long. How long is it gonna take for me to finally just go fuck it and cut it? You know, I'm pushing it. I'm bordering that. What I'm trying to find. Oh, how long are you at right now? Oh, like six months, six I think. Six months. Roughly, if I had to say. If I'm sure if I go back and I try to find, you know, I could I could pinpoint when, but I'm I'm assuming like around six months. You know what I'm saying? And I've gone to like textured, like not cut cut, but trim textured, I mm-hmm. guess. And um that's cool. That thing just fell. And um <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm changing it up too. Like I I would just get the same shit, medium fades, then I started getting low fades, and then I started getting high high taper. Slick backs, you know what I'm saying. So then I even did like a, a a part, a natural part. I don't know, bro. Shout out to the barbers, man. You, like y'all, y'all the real ones. You know what I'm saying? Y'all the heroes. Yeah, going to the barber shops like therapy, bro. It it is, bro. Like sometimes I'll sit there. I I've, I've almost fell asleep like two three times on the seat. Is that a rep to you? Uh, sometimes I do be tired. You be dozing I, off. Yeah, sometimes like <laughs> it's funny because like. Sometimes I have a lot of energy when I go there, and I'm, yeah. I'm we're talking, chopping it up, shooting the shit with the barber. Yeah. And then sometimes I'm just like, I just want my hair cut. I'm so tired. Yeah. Like, <laughs> just I got work in a little bit. Like, yeah. So I just like sit back, don't even say anything. Yeah. Sometimes it's funny though. But yeah, it depends. And I, I've noticed too, like there's a difference in the energy when that whether the shop is packed or when it's like you know maybe it might be slow when you get in at the time you know Mm -hmm. because the barber themselves might be kind of like you know like whatever you could tell you know it's funny you could tell when they're not really talkative i kind of you kind of bounce out that vibe yeah (laughs) you know what i'm saying yeah yeah they're if you just see them they're like hey they're just cutting you're like okay and it's just hella quiet and sometimes i'll throw in some stuff like yo you you watch the fight or you watch the game you know what i mean and whatever their answer is sometimes you'll be like oh yeah yeah no or or, i watched it or they'll be like no i didn't watch it and she stays quiet. I'm like, all right, cool, gotcha. We'll keep it, you know. We'll keep it silent. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like it depends on what what vibe they're on. You know, it really does. <laughs> I was thinking about that the other day. I was like, your barber really does set the vibe for he the does haircut. for the whole week. All right, or the day actually. Don't miss my day. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, shout out to the barber. I don't man. think I, my day has been messed up by a barber. No. <laughs> nah. Unless he fucks your shit up. Yeah, that is true. I don't think I ever got my stuff. Messed up that bad or anything? I have one time. I uh, it wasn't too bad. I'm not trying to knock them, but like, I don't like going to. I can't tell you. Well, I can tell you. Like, this was the last time I went, but I went to like a supercuts. Mm. Look at hey, no, that's, di- where, that's where you messed up already. That, that's what I'm saying. Okay, so no disrespect. <laughs> you, you, all right? know, you know you don't fucked up. Right? I, you know you fucked up, right? <laughs> so this is this is my you know you fucked up moment. I needed a haircut, right? And I usually, I usually would just cut my shit by myself, where I'll go to the barber. So in between cuts, like if I haven't gone in, the, in you know, in a while or so, I'll cut it myself because I know a little bit. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying I'm a pro, but I know enough. You feel me? And, and I can get down with my own hair. I'm not saying I'm gonna get down with yours. I'm saying with me, with my hair, I didn't done it so many times that I already know it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So sometimes, just like changing or like. I know how to change my own oil. I know how to change my own tires. I have my own tools. I have my own spot to do it, right? Yeah. But sometimes, I'll just go pay it. You feel me? Just to get it out the way. Sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes you don't even have the time, so you just have to go real quick. Exactly. So haircut. Boom. I usually cut it. And th- the last time I ever took advantage of this, but so on Veterans Day, they give a bunch of free stuff, right? Okay. So <laughs> so Veterans Day, um, you know, we have like emails and group chats and I'm on with other people, you know, that I was stationed with that were still cool to this day and everything. And they'll be like, yo, y'all going to get the, your free cuts or you're going to get this. I'm like, damn, free cuts. What did they do that at? And they're like top cuts or super cuts or some shit, you know? And I was like, man, I do need a cut. All right, I'll get, you know what I'm saying? Like, I guess I'll go get 
For the free? For the free? I'll yeah. go get it. You know what I'm saying? But I'm thinking like, okay, it's just, it's nothing crazy anyway. I'm not going to tell them. I'm not expecting a straight up skin fade with a lineup and a, you know what I'm saying? Enhancements yeah. and all this stuff. It's a super cuts cut. So I'm thinking like, you know, pretty basic shit. So I go and I tell them, you know, I want to take advantage of the day. And so they're like, okay, cool. Sit down. What do you want? Just a medium fade. Nothing crazy. You know what I'm saying? I get, bro, I get a high and tight, like up here. <laughs> I was like, bro, just because I said I'm in the, I was in the military, I don't want to make it look like I'm still am. You feel me? Like I still am. It's like a high and tight up here. It's not even blended. It's like they went shorter on the top, and I have like with my head, like if I go too short, I look damn near bald. So <laughs> it just, it it wasn't yeah, a little uh, peanut head, huh? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, the yeah, shape yeah. of it. Yeah, so he's like, looking like a little boozy. Ah, bro, yeah. So that was the last time. And that was like my fir- that was like my first year ever in SAC. I was I was my first year removed too. From the military. So that was, yeah, first year here in SAC, and that was the last time I ever went. But no disrespect to Supercuts. Shouts out to y'all. You know what I'm saying? There's always someone older in their 40s or 50s that needs a cut. Yeah, bro. It's funny because, <laughs> like, some people don't care about how their hair gets cut. Like, bro, yes. It kind of scares me. Sometimes they're just like, yeah, I'll just go get whatever, seven ninety nine. you know what I mean, whatever it yeah. is. So I, I get it if you find comfort in that, you know? But you get the you get the nice ass cuts, huh? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah you since I came to SAC, I had the same barber. Yeah, literally, he moved shops. I'm moving with him. Yeah, that's so. what I'm on to. I have two. Well, I got I go. I have my normal barber that I've been to for like six years. I have followed him at yeah two two different spots, and then um, if he's not there, the only the only own not I'm gonna say only, but yeah, only other person that I trust with it is Jeffrey Jeffrey Cash at the Basics. Mm-hmm. So them two, and it's, it's really just. Um, like, who, like I'm like all right, some, it's tough because I'm I'm like I'm not the best at booking through the app, you know, like through books, booksy or or uh, any of those uh, the pages. I'd rather just like text a call, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? But it depends. Like now, like I said, with my hair growing, I don't get cuts too often, so I'll get cut here, I'll get cut there. But really, I only got two people that that I'll trust with my hair. I think that's like all you need, just two people. Because yeah, when I'm inside, I go to that the same barber. Mm-hmm. When I'm back home, my homie cuts my hair. Yeah, yeah. But, like, I hardly go back home, so I'm always getting haircuts inside. Yeah. But True. I feel like if I try someone else, I feel like I'm cheating or something. Not just that, but they don't know you. You feel me? Like, yeah, your hair. they don't know your, ha- your hair, exactly. like, everything. It's How like, you like it, you know? Like, hey, I would, like, one person might do, a, like, a medium face starting from over here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. One of them maybe won't even touch that and will start from here. Or one maybe, of them might give you the top. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they go a little higher. Maybe, and then if you do, like, the, the, the beard, maybe some of them, like, Make it more downward versus more curved. You know what I'm saying? Like, all those little things come into play. You might, so. you might get the south side fade. You might get the Edgar. Nah, I think the <laughs> south side fade is you scarier. The <laughs> you know the south side fade? No, which was that it's one? It's like a fade, but like the opposite. <laughs> yeah, it's... it's. Search it up. It's pretty, it's <laughs> pretty bad, bro. See, this is why I need the damn TV. It's pretty it's bad, bro. I gotta look that shit up. It's pretty bad. I'm gonna ask Jeffrey about it. Yo, let me get the south side cut, bro. Let me get it. The south side fade. The south side fade. You know, run the fade if that shit looks bad. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, bro. So what's been uh what's been good with you, man? It's, I feel like it's been a minute. I think the last time we I saw each other I kicked and we kicked it, um, was at Drake's. I think that was the last time. Yeah. Yeah. I that, think man, just working. Yeah. Decided to go back to school last semester, so Oh, is it? Just working in school. Oh, so you on grind time if it's the last semester. What was that? No, uh, time. last semester I decided to go oh, back to school. I, I, said, still, I still have more. Oh, I thought you said this is, the, I thought you meant like this is the last semester. I was like, oh damn, no wonder why it's crunch time. You I should be done within like two years or so. Mm. But I took some time off for a minute after after football, after I came back from playing ball. Mm-hmm. I just took a little break and just decided to go back last semester and just been focused on that really mm-hmm. and everything else that just comes between. Yeah. The merch and all that shit. Yeah. So it's been going good, man. Honestly, I feel like sometimes, like, I don't have time for anything. I, sometimes I'm in the grind. Yeah. But I mean, it's part of life. You got to embrace it. Still getting workouts in, too, right? Yeah, always, bro. Yeah, for you, sure. You got to take care of yourself. Yeah. I feel like that's a that's what, like, decompresses me from everything else when yeah. I get a workout, just True. focus, listen to music. Yeah. Bump that shit. You, especially with Angel right there, too. You feel me? He's fucking, um, 
That will stay. He's on the, he's on this fitness thing, right? Like he yeah. has a program and has like a whole. He has programs. He he he's been doing the juice yeah. too. So he has a bunch of he's he's on his grind, bro. Yeah. Shout so out to Angel, bro. I'm supposed to have him on. Um, he keeps hitting me up about it too, and I keep telling him like, yeah, and I just never book it. So that one's on me. My bad. But we'll get him on. <laughs> yeah, we'll get him on that man is like, an animal. Yeah. He probably, he was getting ready to work out before I left. Yeah. He's probably going to run like 15 miles today or something. <laughs> Not that, yeah, yeah. I like the way he makes his shit like so easy. Like when I talk to him, he's like, yeah, I just, I ran like uh, this morning alone. It was like five. He's like, that was just in the morning. I'll probably run again at night. And I'm like, bro, I'm tired already just listening to it. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I can't even tell you the last time I ran five. It's been a minute. For me, it was probably like. A year ago or something. Oh, damn. For me, I'm talking about double... Day. For me, it's probably been like 10 years or so bro, since I ran like five miles. It's not that hard, bro. Like Once you get well, I, two, yeah. you, get, you just need to build that consistency. I've done it. I just... It's been like, yeah, like 10 years. I think... Oh, you know you know. Here's a fun fact. Uh, I can't make this up. You know what's my fastest five mile? Five mile? Yeah. Well, like 38. Way lower. Lower? Yeah, 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 yeah. 28 minutes? Close. 27 minutes, 15 seconds. Five miles? And yep. Um, that's fast. The only reason why I know is because um, I did it when I, was, when I was in the military, and I, um, I was getting ready to do, oh, I wanted to do, of course, just, I was like 19, 20 years old, too, mind you that, you know? And so I was like, bro, I want to go, like, we're talking about going to a, a ranger school, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? And so this thing called pre-ranger you got to do and everything, and I was like, what are the requirements? And they're like, well, you got to run five miles under 35 minutes or something like that. And I was like, I'm going to start, let me just see where I'm at with it. I did one, like... Uh, just because I was always good with running. So I was like, let me just do one kind of like feel, like not not unofficial, just let me just kind of get it, you know? Mm -hmm. So I did it and I think it was like 32 minutes. And I was like, I was like, I'm in there. Like, I know for a fact I'm good. And then after I did that, I was like, because um, I had just got done doing my fastest two mile. My fastest two mile was 11 minutes, seven seconds. And I was like, I feel like I can beat it. So two miles, 11 minutes, seven seconds. I was like, I feel like I could beat that. Um, Cause I'm like right there at the six minute mark. If I can get it down, you know, to a five minute pace with a mile, I feel like I can do it. So I was working on it and then, um, I got my fastest mile down to five minutes flat. So then I was like, okay, if I can do this one consistently enough, maybe I can do the, the, uh, the five mile mark. Right. I mean the, for the five mile. And I was trying and trying and trying and yeah, I finished off with 27 minutes, 15 seconds, but it wasn't like a person that's like, all right. Um, what, you know what I mean? Like go. And like, it, yeah. it was, it was like me on my watch. Okay. Like, okay, start, boom. So it's like rough, you know what I mean? But yeah, still 27 minutes. I knocked That's that one fast, out. bro. Yeah, that was back in the day, though, like I said. It ain't now. <laughs> bro, I think the fastest I cracked was like 7.45, 8 minutes. Yeah? Bro, I'm so, I'm a big dude, so yeah, it's, like, it's harder for me <laughs> yeah, to cut. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, and I was lighter, too. Like me, <laughs> I'm the heaviest I've ever been right now, mm. <laughs> which is not saying much because I'm 166, and it's the heaviest I've ever been, 166. So I was like, I'm not even that heavy. That's what I'm bro. saying. Like, like I'm, yeah. I'm I'm not the heaviest I've been right now, but I feel like I'm pretty heavy. Yeah. Like 245, 250. You're 245? Exactly, bro. No, you ain't. I swear. No, you're not. I swear. I'll take it like 220. That, that's what I want to be. That's my goal to be like Do you want to go 220? Yeah, 225 was like, I have been there before. That's when I felt like my healthiest. Yeah, like, yeah. I, I know I'm a big dude. Yeah, yeah. I want to be a big dude. You yeah. know, like I don't mind... Being big, I don't want to be skinny. Right, right. I don't want to be 166. <laughs> 166 and a half, all right? I'll take that half a pound. 166. No, probably, but I was probably thinner. 168 now with your hair growing out. Well, my hair going out and then my, my grandpa's jacket, you know what I'm saying? RIP. Maybe with this jacket, I'll probably wear 168, you know what I'm saying? But, um, yeah, that I was, so I was thinner, which is a little bit embarrassing to say, you know, out loud. But, you know, who's watching? Who's listening? Nobody's listening. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, but... Um, that's dope though, man. That's good that uh, you know, it's it, so in a way it's kind of like you take a little break too from everything too, right? Because you're kind of like not as active as much on social media too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, that little break is needed a bit. Yeah, uh, I don't. I don't know if I'd call it a break. Well, it was a break from a lot of stuff, but mm -hmm. I just been focused, bro. Like on just school. Like honestly, school is hella stressful right now. Oh, I bet. Well, yeah. like, especially in the, this uh, anatomy class I'm taking, like, trying to learn everything. That sounds, anatomy just sounds fucking stressful, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah, but I mean, it's all part of the grind, man. You got to embrace it. You got to put in the work, and just like anything else, you'll get what you want in return. Mm -hmm. Can't cheat it. That's true. That's true, y'all. 
Yeah, I don't know if I would call it a break then either. More more so of like your your focus maybe shifted or prioritized right mm-hmm. now. Does that make sense? You know yeah. I mean? I'd say that's a better, you know, way to describe it, right? Yeah, because I feel like break sounds like you're not doing anything. And it's yeah. like we're not it's not that we're not doing anything. I know, right? Make it sound like school. Yeah, I'm off for winter break. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like spring break. <laughs> spring break is here, so you know what I'm saying? Hey, it almost is though. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, as we're getting closer to it all. <laughs> this fucking guy. That's good though, bro. Like it's uh it, it's good that that we're both out here too, like kinda, you know, back back in front mm-hmm. in in the in the in the forecourt for everything too. So I'm happy with that. And I'm happy that um uh, you know, that you're here too because I want to take advantage of a few things, okay? Mm-hmm. Um, I can't have you here and not talk about some shit, talk about some sports, right? Yeah. Okay, so here's the thing. What happened with the 49ers? I know that's your team. What happened? I know you and JJ was over there and, Le- and Levi's, you know what I mean? But. Yeah, it was well, like okay. that, that Seahawks game, that wild card game. That was a fun game. I never, I didn't sit, sit down the whole game. And y'all won. And we won. Yeah. But what is it? Okay, so here, here's my question with this. And this is the reason what why I asked. What like, happened with like the last game? So not even just that. So that's what I say. So when I say what happened with the 49ers, I should, I guess I should have said what's happening. Like, what do you think? Because y'all like y'all are contenders. Mm-hmm. It seems like for the last fucking five years, yeah, right? Like four NFC championships yeah. in the last. That's what five I'm saying. Years. So like, it feels like y'all are always right there. You know what I'm saying? And this is me unbiased i'm not because i'm a raiders fan mm-hmm. you know i'm saying but i can still acknowledge the obvious fucking it, it's there you guys are favorites a lot of times to win and are always in the conversation for a reason yeah right it's like there's no hate in that shit at all and it's like y'all get there every single time mm-hmm. and just something it's just always something yeah man it's it's a it's, uh, it's stressful right it's stressful sometimes being a fan Hey, but, yeah, you telling me, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but I mean, it just sucks, man. When once Brock Purdy got hurt, yeah. Honestly, I was watching the game with everyone at my house. Uh huh. Once Purdy got hurt, mm-hmm. they put um, what's his name, Josh Johnson in. He's like the third string too, right? He's like the third string. Yeah. yeah. No, he's a fourth string. Oh, that's right. You got to remember, it was Trey Lance, Jimmy, and Brock then Purdy, Brock and then Johnson. That's right. So once he got in. I was like, oh, this is this, this is not gonna look good. I just like, yeah. I didn't even turn off the TV. I just went upstairs. I was like, I'm gonna go study. <laughs> I already know what's gonna happen, man. Well, then he was in and out too, because then Brock and yeah, then, again. then he got a concussion. Yeah, and then Brock Purdy went back in. He tore his uh, he tore a ligament on his elbow. Yeah, yeah. And he couldn't even throw a football, so it was just running the ball game. Who was gonna be the like the. The back, not the backup, backup, but the if all else fails. I think it was gonna be a uh, McCaffrey. McCaffrey, right? Yeah, they were already trying to. Uh, didn't they change they, his helmet? I'm about to say, didn't they make? Didn't he throw one at one point? It was like a flea flicker or something? He threw at one point. He might have honestly. Like I said, <laughs> once they oh, lost. Okay, yeah. Once once he got hurt, I was like, I can't watch this. Yeah, it was. Um, it was. Uh, I thought I really. I knew y'all was gonna beat the Cowboys. Yeah. I knew that one was a given. Um, but the Eagles, though, I was a little bit like. I was like, oh, I don't know about that. Because, you know, just because the record mm-hmm. and, and the way Jalen had been playing. And so I'm like, all right, it's going to be tough, but I can see them pulling it off. You know what I'm saying? And I I tuned in. Yeah. And then it was just like, ah, damn. Like, it was just one domino effect, one thing after another. You know what I'm saying? It was bad. Yeah. But what? It, but what is it, though? Like, it's not, I don't think it's a, so defensively, y'all are straight. Yeah. O-line, straight. Mm-hmm. Maybe pick someone up, like. Yeah, I'm a little better protect the quarterback a little bit more. Yeah, but I mean, literally, we're good everywhere. Mm-hmm. It's just that quarterback position now. That's like, damn, what's gonna happen? You think it's one of those type of things where you can pick one and just drop it in, or you think it takes and it takes some time to kind of fit into that system? Well, I mean, I think you could drop in anyone. Yeah, yeah. you just need like a decent enough, decent enough quarterback. Like, um, Kyle Shanahan's good. Mm-hmm. He's a genius. Yeah. He'll make he'll turn a decent player into like a pretty good mm-hmm. quarterback, or at least make him look like it. Yeah, yeah. Damn, that's you know what I'm saying. But what about uh? Did you hear about? I don't know. This was like rumors. I'm saying it wasn't true, but did you get hyped at all when rumors started circulating about you know Tom Brady could potentially play one year for the for the Niners? I mean, I I think it would be a good idea. That was his favorite team growing up. Mm-hmm. He's he's from the Bay, mm-hmm. and 
It just makes sense. Yeah. But I wasn't going to get my hopes up. Like, he's already, like... 45. 45. Yeah. Or 44, 45. We'll just say 45. And then the way those games were looking last year for the Bucks was, like... Yeah. I don't know. It wasn't looking nice. But then again, they didn't have no run game. Mm-hmm. He was throwing the ball, like... He just had what, Fernet? Yeah, but he didn't really He wasn't exactly... That much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But... Like I was saying, um, Don Farrell was going to say Damn. Let me remember. Hold on. Tom Brady. Boom. He was throwing the ball like 60 times, bro, in in a game. Yeah. I was looking at the stats, and one of them was like, he would average like 45 to 60 throws a game. Throws, bro. That's a lot. You're like probably running the ball like 10 times in a game, you know? At his age, his arm. Yeah. Then he starts to get predictable. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then towards the end, maybe the, the passes aren't so accurate. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I, I think for that, it was mostly like a whole team thing. It wasn't just Brady. Yeah. Well, I think, too, anytime you get like a big name like that, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Especially Tom Brady. I think everybody, me, me as a Raiders fan, if they're just like, yo, he's thinking about going to Las Vegas. I was like, shit, yeah. And then that's just like the first initial. That's a knee jerk reaction, right? Mm-hmm. My, the first, the knee jerk reaction is just kind of like, oh yeah, 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 for sure we'll get him. You know what I'm saying? But then it's just like, do we really want him? At you know what I mean? At the end of the day, do we really if, oh, for one year? Because you know he's not going to sign a five year. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So it's like, all right, you're really just getting a one year out of him. So hey, if that one year, but that's yeah. I mean, it's, it's same, that's the same thing with basketball right now, too. That's what um, with Kyrie to the Mavs. I don't know if mm-hmm. you've been keeping up with it or follow it or not at all. But that's like one of the uh, the thing general managers do. They're like, they'll, they're really no risk and get rid of a bunch of players or picks for something that's only like half a year or one year, ideally. Yeah. It's like the same thing with Kevin Durant when after he tore his uh, Achilles when he was with the Raptors. No, not the Raptors. Sorry. Um, when he was with the Warriors. And then it was like, all right, it's tricky because now he he has a player option and he's a free agent technically, uh, but his Achilles is torn. So who's gonna pick him up? Because that first year, you know, you're not he's not you're not gonna have him for a year. Mm-hmm. So when the Nets had picked him up for the four year deal, I think or something like that, whatever it is, they knew okay, we're picking him up for the longevity of it in hopes that we can get a championship out of him, knowing that that first year you're pretty much paying him to recover, and he's yeah. and it's on your on your watch and on your money. It's the GMs that like, well, we'll take, we'll do and this to win. And he's not even there no more. And he's not even there anymore. That's Bro. crazy, right? They just left Ben Simmons by himself. And that's and actually that's okay. So that's that's one, the one thing we're gonna get into right now too. Um, but so for the Niners, so what is it? What, what do you think they need to do um, to finally get over that hill to make it to the fucking Super Bowl? Honestly, I think they have everything they need. They just need to stay healthy. Stay healthy. That, that's it, really. Yeah. Like they what have you, all the pieces around. They have the players. You keep Brock Purdy. I mean, if he's healthy when he comes back by the time training camp, why not? He, Keep him. He, how much games did he win? Like eight Six. straight games oh, yeah. or something like that? Eight, yeah. So, It was like not? the first, and then, first rookie quarterback since fucking... Yeah, first rookie quarterback to beat Tom Brady, too. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I, I could see that. Yeah, why not? Bring it back, run it back, keep him healthy, healthy all the way through. Yeah. But I don't know. It's kind of, it gets kind of tricky because they have Trey Lance, too. And that was who they were... Throwing, they threw all, all their chips on. in for him. Yeah, they all in. Drafted him in the first round. Yeah. Oh, hi, so, well, I would just let them battle out in training camp, and whoever does better, mm-hmm. give them that spot. True. Okay. Now to shift from 49ers to Raiders. Okay. You tell me this. Have you, have you been keeping up with this Derek Carr shit? Yeah. Okay. You know, he, up. He, he just visited the Jets. Did he? Yeah. He just over the past week. This over this weekend, he just went to go visit. Um, I know he had a meeting with the Saints too. Um, but he was yeah he was visiting the, the Big Apple and the Jets and everything. Um, he's not accepting any other trades from any other team, and the Raiders officially gave him his papers. Said you you know you're free to go. So, as a Raiders fan, I'm kind of mixed with emotions on it because on one hand, like we've been rocking with Derek Carr like the last eight years, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying. And it's been a fucking roller coaster of a ride, ups and downs. And at some point, you know, it's promising. You guys been through a lot, bro. Been through some shit. You know Antonio saying? Brown and everything. Yeah, bro, yes. And <laughs> Pulling up to training camp in a uh, air balloon. Bro, never even. Pl- I mean, play he did the, preseason. Yeah, preseason, but a, never actual. And they were giving him 30 mil. Like, he's guaranteed 30 mil. 
All you have to do is show up until Tuesday. It was four days away because by the time the the game the the kickoff it was four days away, and then just wilding out. And this started jumping up and down in celebration. I think he was on his phone with his grandma or his mom or something like that. When they were like, "Oh, they released me," and he started being excited, and I was like, "Bro, what?" Uh. Yeah, he, he that he's a whole other thing. But with Derek Carr though, bro, it's like, uh, yeah, it's, it was up and down because I'm like, all right. How, one hand, we've been rocking with this dude for the last eight years. It's been promising. It's been let downs, promising and let downs. And like I've, like I want to uh, be all. We feel like we've been all in, but it's like we want to succeed with him. We want to get over that hump with him and kind of win a championship with him. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, it's like I get it. If after all these fucking years and it's never, never been out of the wild card, only been to a wild card spot two years within his within his tenure. And the first year he didn't even he got hurt. You know, so it's like. I understand already. It's like, yo, we've suffered enough, dude. It's been like a 20-year drought. You feel me? Like, let us get an actual playoff win. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and that's why I feel like it, it's, it, I, I, it sucks, but I understand, like, we got to go forward there. But then again, I don't know what the other option is, too. You know? Like, who, who are they supposed to try to bring? I know they, they're just saving, like, 40, was it 30 or 40 mil, something like that? Mm-hmm. But it's like, well, who are you going to bring in now? Because I know they're talking about Aaron Rodgers, potentially. But That'd it's like, be nice, bro. it'd be nice. Get him back with uh, Devontae, Devontae Adams. Adams. Yeah, it'd be nice. Don't get me wrong. We'll definitely take him. But it's like, you're not getting, don't think of, don't think of you know, don't think of 09, 2010 Rodgers. You know, don't think back MVP Rodgers right now. It's like, he's going to get an older Aaron Rodgers. And he's the last one of all those uh, great yeah. quarterbacks from the 2000s. The Mannings, you know the, what I'm saying? The Mannings are gone. Uh, <sighs> Brady's done. Brady's retired. Philip Rivers, gone. That's right. There's a lot of them, bro. Drew Brees, yeah. gone. Drew Brees, gone. All, all our favorite quarterbacks. He's, he's the, the last, last of one. the dying breed. He literally, literally is. And it's like, so on one hand, it's like, yeah, you want to be a part of that. You know what I mean? Because how much how much longer is he actually going to be around? You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? But at the same time, it's like, then it's is it the same issue as when he was the last three years? It's like he just didn't have any O-line. He was getting sacked a lot. You know what I'm saying? Like he... His his issue was not so much of like he just sucks, you know. It's not it's not so much of that, which I think. And actually, y'all, y'all would every time y'all would meet up, y'all would just have the upper hand on him too. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. But it's just uh, you know, not a lot of receivers, especially with Devontae being gone. His I I just read a stat. I think it was this morning or yesterday, but it was like his his um his QB percentage dropped like twenty percent ever since Devontae left. And it's like yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, you know what I'm saying it makes sense. But so yeah, I, I I would like to get him back. I would like to see him on it, but at the same time, I'm just not like, I guess over here keeping my hopes up. I'm not like, yo, we go into the Super Bowl. Yeah, you know what I'm saying like, nah, I don't I'll, think it's like that. I think that would be a good spot or a good yeah. player to get him, or just drop someone. You know, go drop someone. I'm mm-hmm. trying to build off them, but you guys don't have a good history drafting quarterbacks, huh? Jamarcus Russell. You know what I'm saying? Marcus Russell, bro. <laughs> LSU, stand up. Hey, <laughs> that's hella funny, Jamarcus Russell. I was watching a. Um, did you watch? Did you ever see like a little uh, documentary thing on him? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, that guy used to. Um, the coach used to give him blank film. Yeah. And he would tell him watch him, and then he would bring it back. But the coach knew like the films were bl- uh, blank. Yeah. He was just fucking Fuck with, with them. them and he brought him back and he's like what do you think about him and Jamarcus was like oh yeah they were good he just gives him back <laughs> yeah. you can tell he didn't give a fuck yeah. well I, we saw him live a few times like i remember uh we used to go when we would go to uh to the coliseum mm-hmm. we would watch it live and then like homie would literally be like when they're doing the stretches and the warmest and everything he just literally be like like laying there just kind of like you know what i'm saying yeah. like was it like it was apparent even then he was just kind of like, uh, you know what I'm saying? Like stretching, like bullshit stretches, whatever. And, um, you know, big dude, you know, like solid. He, he had promised. Yeah, he had promised, you know what I'm saying? And it's just, I don't know, man. Like it was just one of those. Same thing what they say about Kwame Brown, you know, like um, in, in basketball. Uh, when the Wizard had drafted him, the same thing. They said, had hella promise, big dude and everything. And he just never lived up to it. I guess the same thing you could say thing about same thing with Jamarcus Russell. I guess you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Never lived up to it, which was unfortunate because I was just like, "Oh, this big ass dude, like he's got to be good, like Ben Roethlisberger size." You feel me? Yeah. Yeah. He, and he was he was tight at LSU. Yeah, he was doing his thing, but you know, again, like you said, don't have a history of drafting, so I don't know. Maybe maybe if they do a swap. Maybe they you know, 
Maybe do the swap. Lamar Jackson's out there. Dude, um, Lamar I don't know. Jackson would go crazy. I don't know how how, how would it would fit with them, but I, you know, it kind of you know Raiders is kind of his styles. Oh, you see, have you seen the thing about um, what's his name, uh, Henry Ruggs? Mm, what happened? Yeah, remember, so remember, if so I remember what happened to him well, in Vegas with the cop. I mean, with the you know speeding like 150 the or some shit. Car like that. crash. I didn't know this whole time he's been on on bail. What is he? Yeah, like he's been out. Oh, like I he, house I, arrest mainly, but I thought he's been locked up this whole time. But he he they granted him bail and he's been out. Oh shit! But they're talking about um the 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 actual trial is gonna start come it's gonna come I think this March or May mm-hmm. March or May, and um you're saying like yo he's already thinking about like yo as soon as I get back um what team like I'm gonna go in with and everything like he's already thinking about football Damn. right back into it and everything and I don't I think the, I, I want to say the Raiders released them I want to say they released them so. I don't even think he can come back with them, but same thing. Promise, dude. That motherfucker was fast, yeah. rookie, fast. Dude, that that um, Alabama team he was in, mm. crazy. One of yeah. one of the best uh, receiving corps in yeah, in college football history. It, it was like Rugs, Judy, mm-hmm. um, homeboy for the Eagles, Smith. Oh, okay, yeah, yep. And then there was another guy. I forgot his name. That class in general. But yeah, that that. <sighs> Nice. That that was a good that was a good team. Yeah. Well, we'll see. Like I said, we'll see what happens with the um, with, with Derek Carr and, and where he ends up. I feel like he's gonna. I feel like he's gonna end up. If I had to choose, not that no one gives a fuck. I would say if I had to guess, if I had to guess, I think uh, I think the Jets are gonna be a a, mm-hmm. a good contender for him, as far as who he might go with. I don't think he'll go with the Saints, but who knows? I think he'll either go Jets or maybe Colts. That's what I was going to yeah, say right now. Maybe like Colts. either Jets or Colts. Yeah. Bo- both teams are pretty solid all around. They just need that one yeah. that one piece of the puzzle. Yeah. But honestly, the only thing that bothered me about the Derek Carr situation was like, damn, bro, he put in, what was it, eight years for you guys? Mm-hmm. You guys just cut him like that in the, in the middle of the season? Just tell At him, the don't very show up. Last don't two games. Up. Don't show up. Last two games. Bro, let him finish. You got, like... Yeah, two, what the fuck was two games? Yeah. And, and then it mathematically... Shows you, it shows you how the business side is Bro, man, mathematically, cold. when we, it was uh, second to the last game, I think when we played y'all, um, mathematically, had we beat you guys, we would still be technically in the race for a wild card. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it was like, come on, bro. Like, you know, like... <sighs> yeah, I don't know, but um, I still rock with him. You know what I'm saying? And we'll we'll see where he ends up. And um, you know, Derek, if you're listening, if you're watching, you know, if you want to come to the podcast and mm-hmm. break it down, you know, we'll bring you open arms right here. We'll talk about it. <laughs> um, but okay, okay. So this new thing, so going past all that, I want to incorporate this new thing going forward on, on the podcast. So whether it be this is every week too, whether it's solo guests, whatever it is, I want to incorporate this new thing, right? So. It's called hypocritical news. <laughs> you know, hypocritical news. Basically, what this one is, I or we are going to talk about topics that we find either hypocritical or reasonable. Now, let me explain with this one. So, if it's hypocritical, we're going to try to dissect and what it is and be like, all right, is this hypocritical? Hypocritical of a person to be this, or is this news hypocritical, or is it valid? You know. And that's when it goes into the reasonable. All right, is this reasonable? Is this person making sense? I'm going to give you two different things and be like, all right, is this hypocritical or is it reasonable? Okay? Right. I'll, I'll give you examples of the first one, okay? Do I have, to, I have to explain myself too? Yes. Okay. Okay, but this will be fun, okay? So you tell me this. Okay. Have you been seeing these damn um, balloons that have been going over? The Like one was over Montana, that white balloon yeah, that they yeah, shot yeah. down and they said it's like from China and everything? Mm-hmm. Okay. Let me ask you this. Is this hypocritical or is it reasonable? Shoot them all down. Right? That's what I'm saying. But you don't know what they're doing. And now look, it looks like me break it down even further. But here's the thing, though. Do you think it's hypocritical of us to shoot it down? Us meaning the US of A to shoot it down if we have some on other places? Like, what if we have, we might not got balloons, but what if we got satellites over a country? You think it's hypocritical of us to be shooting them down, but yet we got some shit over here? Or do you think it's reasonable for us to shoot it down because it's like, yo, you got caught? Yeah, I think it's, uh, <laughs> it, it's, it's reasonable. It's reasonable. You got to protect your country. Okay. But it's not hypocritical of us? I mean... Have we shot no. some... Have we 
have they, you know, have we shot, have they shot some of our shit down? I mean, it's one of those things where it's like, if you get caught, you have full right to take it down, you know? Uh huh. Like, if they find any satellites, take them down. Like, that's like. That's reasonable. That's reasonable. Yeah. Because even though, even though you can make the argument that, all right, don't be hypocrites because we might be spying over here too. That's not the question. That's not the case. It's whether it was reasonable to shoot it down. That's what we're talking about. Yeah. So it's re. I'd say reasonable for it to be shot down, and we're not hypocrites because we didn't, we're not dumb enough to put balloons to get caught. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Shut them down. It's kind of okay. Funny. <laughs> okay. Next one. These sightings. The these new sightings, which they keep saying, well, we don't know what these are, but all of a sudden there's UFOs everywhere lately. Have you been keeping up with this shit? Mm, I've seen a little bit of it. There's a bunch of like, all of a sudden, we went from, now we don't know what it is. So for those that don't know, UFO stands for Unidentified Flying Object. Mm -hmm. First it was like, nah. And now the government's like, all right, that definitely was some shit we can't identify. Or definitely was a UFO, blah, blah. You know? So here's, here's my thing. Is this hypocritical or reasonable? Is it hypocritical for the government to just be like, Nope, nope, nope. And then all of a sudden be like, nah, yeah, they are. Or is it reasonable for them to hide it? And then now in 20, because it's, it's easier to hide shit in 2009, 2005, mm -hmm. 2010 when there's no 4K. You know what I'm saying? No cameras everywhere. And now it's like, all right, y'all got us. Or yeah, you know, they've been out. Or we're seeing this. We're seeing that. Is it hypocritical? Reasonable. Mm, no, I think that's hypocritical. I, right? Or okay. just like, at the end of the day... The truth is going to come to the light. Yeah. So they just been trying to hide it for a minute. Oh, no, it's fake. This, this, and that. Obviously, yeah. uh, there's UFOs and stuff like that. Yeah. Maybe it's not a uh, alien or something like that, yeah. but it's there's unidentified. Right, because by proxy, by objects. definition, it doesn't... Th I think automatically when you hear UFO, people think flying saucer. You know what I mean? Yeah. That right? That's like that the first cool, thing you think of. Uh, right in the, in the <laughs> this fucking guy. at the fair. At the, at the fair, you're just standing there, motherfucker trying to climb like Spider Man and shit. Bro. <laughs> because Bro. technically, I could be like, that's a UFO. Yeah. Right. But I did. <laughs> I, I say for sure, for sure, for sure. Uh, I say uh, hypocritical as fuck because you can't just be like no, 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 and then all these years be like okay, yes, 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 and then going forward every single time it pops up and be like, yo, actually, you know what? Now that you guys mentioned it, there's definitely stuff up there. It's like, come on, bro. Come on now. It's you've not, been known that. You've been known that. It can't be reasonable for it to just hide. No, I can, I can, you know, I can understand to an extent to be like, the reason why they're not shouting out everything or saying all this and that because maybe we, they, could be, they, could, they could make the excuse to be like, maybe they're, they're just not ready. Maybe they're just not that. But I would argue and be like, that's not up to you. But <laughs> you know, yeah, that, that's what I was thinking right now too. Yeah, like, yeah maybe uh, the world's not ready to see this. But but still, I mean, are we ever ready for anything? Exactly. I mean, Y two K, Y two K, two thousand. Remember that shit going into the two thousands when people were like, the world is ending. I don't know how that's related to UFOs or this shit, but I wanted to break down that one. The, oh, okay, the, the end of the Mayan calendar. Story. Yes. Okay. Next one. Speaking about Kevin Durant. All right. Here's here's. Okay, I'm interested in this one. Okay, do you think it's hypocritical as fuck or reasonable for Kevin Durant to go to the Suns? Hmm. Now, let me break this down. The reason why I say, is it hypocritical of him to do this? Because he got, he got a bunch of flack, a bunch of shit for leaving OKC to go join the Warriors with Steph Curry, Klay Thompson, Draymond Green, who are just lost in, in the NBA Finals, a very close Game 7 to the Cavs. So you join that team that also beat you when you were up 3-1, you know? So you join that team and then leaves to Brooklyn because he said he wants to he wants to break that stigma of like, all right, you only did it, you only got two chips because of the Warriors. So you left to go play for the Nets to try to win one on your own. And it's not working. So you go join a, a, a fucking solid team in the Phoenix Sun in the West with Chris Paul, Devin Booker, and um What's the center's name? Uh, Aiden. Yeah, uh, Aiden. Dante Aiden? Dante Aiden? Aiden. We'll just say Aiden. Yeah. So you leave and then go <laughs> back to join a team that just two years ago went to the NBA Finals. Is that hypocritical of him to do that? Or is it reasonable given what was going on in Brooklyn? I mean, everyone, like, 
I guess it just wasn't working out right there. When yeah. Kyrie left, he probably felt like, oh man, I'm I'm done. I'm, I can't stay here. But I think it's a, it's hypocritical. Okay. He he left to do, like to get his own team together and requested the Suns specifically. Didn't say like, oh, trade me here. Well, said trade me, but said like, yo, trade me to the Suns. So tan chosen, pick that spot. That's hypocritical of him. Yeah, it is. I'll but give. He, he's not. He's not. I was watching this um, podcast. Uh huh. What's his name? Charles Barkley was in it. All the smoke. Yeah. Yeah. He he. They said he's right too, bro. Like he needs to do it himself. Like all these players didn't get the respect they got till they went to go win it somewhere else. Mm-hmm. Kobe. Kobe. Mm-hmm. He needs to win it without Shaq. LeBron. He did that. LeBron. Mm-hmm. Without um. Dwayne Wade and Miami Heat. Dwayne Wade yeah. went back yeah. to Cleveland, won it. So I mean, yeah. Durant's a great player, one of the best scorers ever. Yeah, but he needs to do it not by himself, but with his own cast. I th- I think so. I'm back and forth on this one. First, I'm on board with you. I was like, yo, he's being a, he's being hypocritical as fuck right now mm-hmm. because you said you didn't care, you said you let because this. But then you just did the same thing. The same shit. Literally, now granted, they're not the Warriors, but they're Western Conference contenders and just and just played in the finals, lost against the Bucks, but just two years ago. You know what I'm saying? So and it's still the same core. You know what I'm saying? The only people they got rid of, I think, was um uh what's homie's name with the big at, with the fucking sick ass shoe collection. Um Tucker? Oh uh, P- PJ PJ Tucker. Tucker, yeah. That's I think that's, that's the only person that that got that got moved out, I think, right? Oh, they just lost Crowder, I think, Jay Crowder yeah. or something like that. Yeah, or something like that, right? So, my point in that is like you just go into the same thing. But then I thought about it more, and I changed my mind to I believe it's reasonable now. It's reasonable. I feel like only because you went to to the Nets to join with Kyrie. You went to the Nets, and they end up getting Harden. So you had a solid three you could win with. If you have James Harden, Kyrie Irving, and your KD, and y'all can't get past the first round, come on now. And if you got you three together, I think and I think there was a stat that was like with them three on the court combined, they only they only played together like with the combined games of like fourteen or fifteen games, because then one person was always hurt or Kyrie was out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And the whole time there, you're like, all right, bro. Um. I'm trying to win or what? You know what I'm saying? And then you have Kyrie stuff going in and out, demanding this, demanding that. I'm not going to play. I'm going to play. Trade me. Don't trade me. And then if you remember too, KD actually requested a trade like last the pre or prior, but then he ended up getting back on good terms with them. So the reason why I say it's reasonable now too is because like he already, it wasn't like it's going to be anything new. Last year he was already going to do it. And then this year, he actually followed through with it before the trade deadline. Yeah. So I ch- that's the only reason why I was like, all right, I can see why it's reasonable now. Like, again, because I, I think we forget to, like, uh, same thing with Steph. We just assume, like, oh, um, like, oh, yeah, he's doing his thing. But don't forget, bro, they're in their 30s already. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, they're in their 30s. They're not, like, they're not young 25-year-olds who could, like, I could take off this load and do everything. Like, now nah, they're in their 30s now, dog. Like, Steph is, like, 34 now. You know what I'm saying? So I think 33, 34. So I know that time is ticking. You know what I'm saying? They're like vet vets in this shit already. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I could see like now why it's reasonable. Yeah. The Suns, they have to win it. Yeah. There's no way they, they don't win it. Yeah, you can't. After all this, it's like the the Rams. Oh, yeah. Got rid of all these picks, got rid of yep. all this just to... You had to win. They won it. You had to. So it's all or nothing for yeah. the Suns. For it, the Suns. It's gonna especially, be. If you're, especially if you're Chris Paul. Like Monty Williams, the head coach... You're doing your thing. Um, Devin Booker is Devin Booker is gonna be all right. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Um, DeAndre Ayton is gonna be all right. Chris Paul, like, bro, you had, especially the year the year that they went to the finals, they beat a Kawhi a Kawhi Leonard list Clippers. Y'all beat the Lakers who didn't have Anthony Davis, and then you went to the finals and it was like, oh, bro, like. This was your chance to fucking win. You went up 2-0 against the Bucks and then lost four straight. So this is your year. With KD, this is your year to win. Yeah, you can't 
you literally can't lose. If you yeah. lose, bro, they're not going to they're yeah, not gonna gonna be, live, it's gonna be a sad story yeah okay this next one is this hypocritical or reasonable uh chloe bailey right now is getting a lot of backlash chloe bailey you know what she is a singer basically yeah. she has a she's she has like a song coming out she has a music video they, they kind of posted like a little uh clip or a little uh was like a preview it's mm -hmm. basically it's like all right she's making she's making a song with chris brown okay. and she's getting hella flack right now because her songs are all about women empowerment and like uh, women positivity, pro women and everything. And they're like, "Why are you making a song with Chris Brown?" Because all the all the Rihanna shit mm -hmm. that the people are still bringing up and everything. So this is why I say: Is this hypocritical or reasonable? Is it hypocritical for her, for her to have to make her music centered around that, but then make a track with her with him, and people be like, because she's getting hella flack for right now. Mm -hmm. Is it hypocritical or reasonable? Reasonable. Here's my thing. I say it's reasonable because it's not like you're being like, yo, I'm gonna whatever whatever views he has is mine too. Whatever he believes, that's mine too. He voted for so and so, that means I, I'm rocking with so and so. He likes green enchiladas, and that means I like green enchiladas. Like, no, not not every little thing has to fall in line. It's just a song. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And you don't even know what the song is about. Maybe it's just about maybe it's just a bop. You know what I mean? Maybe it's just like dance. Maybe it's just a club joint. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. She's not over here saying like respect women. Then he's on it too. You know, it's just, maybe it might just be a little bop. You feel me? Maybe it's a love R and B song. Yeah. You don't know what it is. And, and I think that um, that whole Chris Brown thing that was like how many years ago? Bro, it was like twelve, like two thousand eight, has seven. He said seven? he said he was nineteen when that happened. Uh, a long ass time ago. Like don't like. Yeah, he's not right. Yeah, I'm not. Know? Yeah, we're not making excuses not. from anything, but it's like, it's just, it's just music. And I think also, I think um, the uh, uh, the consumer will dictate it because even though people might be like, "Oh, that's that's wrong of her, that's hypocritical of her," let the people dictate. If the music comes out and it's a hit and it's being played all over the place and people are downloading it, that means that people are fucking with it. Mm -hmm. You know, so don't don't let like social media kind of persuade it to change it and be like oh now she's a hypocrite you know what i'm saying i say it's reasonable i think it's reasonable too. yeah because how much you know like where do you stop there like where do you stop does he just stop making music with all women in general then you wouldn't get so much fucking hits it's chris brown yeah you know what i'm saying like at what point does it end and i think like as a artist that's a conversation they probably had already and like yeah they got to see each other's side of it you know because mm -hmm. she's all about like woman empowerment and mm -hmm. all that and like she, obviously she knows what happened yeah so she probably i'm pretty sure she asked her questions too and she's like yeah oh, you know this it's probably been this much years that happened and bro she's young you too. probably grew from all that and she's young too she probably she was probably like maybe like 10 years 10 years old or some shit when this yeah. happened or some shit you know i don't know but i'm just saying like if you get to the point where they're they're in the booth together, if they're um, making a music video together, together and everything, she's probably comfortable with it, right? Yeah, I think it's reasonable. I don't think it's anything for her to be, you know, hypocritical about. Yeah, you're yeah. you're right. I I think so too. Yeah, well, I think we're, she's we're she's right here rapping. Chris Brown behind her, she's like this, like. <laughs> <laughs> he gets on there. She's like, "Yo, I think that's my time," and she's just like, "No, I think I'm gonna go." And he's like, "Nah, it's my time." Okay, <laughs> you know, what I mean? but no. he did. He did put. Um, I had seen. Let me try to find it. I did see that. Uh, he brought brought something up recently, huh? Yeah, he put oh, something blue like. Blueface. Oh, was it blueface? Okay, I think I and saw. And his girl. Here it is. Look at. Oh no, that's another. I guess he. You know, people talking about he kicked some people out. Uh, where's it at? Where's it at? Here we go. Um, basically, he put like it was on a story about like he was comparing like uh, making it like a racial thing, pretty much being like, all right. Like y'all want to chastise me, or or say like, what? Why is he working? Why is she working with him? And why is this and that? And he got. He's like, but yet, so many. He's like, y'all still supporting um, white artists that like, um, that are still actively beating their wives, are still doing this child stuff and comparing it. I'm gonna try to find the exact one. Here we go. Is this it? Yeah. He put. Where the cancel culture with these white artists that date underage women, beat the fuck out of their wives, giving bitches AIDS. Oh, that's right. They are. I, I, I went like this because they blurred it out. Mm. 
And he put, oh, that's right. They are your buddies. No more fake love from me. Stay out my way or get ran over. Simple as that. None of you and I mean none of you. Yeah. Nobody can fuck with me. And, so, and then he put like pictures like of the comparison. He put Tommy Lee and Pam, Pamela Anderson. Nicholas Cage. That's random. What's up? I didn't know that. Emma Roberts. What's that supposed to mean? Mel Gibson, They're Sean probably Penn. Been in those uh, situations. Oh, that Charlie up. Sheen. Charlie Sheen don't make no music. I think he's just talking about like in general, like in those. General, how come like nobody those comes after them? Hollywood. Yeah. I get it. I get it. You know, I feel like some of it might be a reach because, like Nicolas Cage, he don't make music. Yeah. But he's just giving examples of like what he was talking about. Yeah. It's okay. Okay. Well, I, I think it's reasonable. I think it's reasonable. Yeah. Well, those were the. That's the little. The that's segment. a little segment. Yeah. That's hypocritical or reasonable, which makes sense. So yeah, I'm gonna do those going forward. Every single episode is gonna incorporate that one, whether that be a solo one or a guest-driven one. And um, I think what I want to do too is when I have the repeat guest ones, I'm not gonna make it more so like interview based because you know if I have a new person on and if I haven't met them and everything, mm-hmm. I do want to make it like you know somewhat of an interview because I want to get to know them and everything. But when it's repeated guests like this too, I just want to make it as entertaining and it just flow as much as possible. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because like, you can't just be interviewing them again. Like, I know. We already know your story. <laughs> exactly, right? But you do want to give a little bit because you know yeah. for new, new listeners and everything, but it's like, that's what I want to have on and that's what I want to make it for the return guest ones. But yeah. But you were incremental and helped me out too with that. You know, talk, like giving me that advice for everything. So, mm-hmm. um, and taking that in, like I said, just it's more so like bringing in every, what everybody had told me about what I should do and I'm like, yeah, for sure. Listen and we take that in and, and at the end of the day, it's like, how do I, it changes from how do I uh, how do I deliver the best product that I can give? Forget about whether I need four or five fucking of the top line cameras. Forget about needing a whole crew behind me. Forget about feeling like I have to have this, 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 and the best this, the best that. How do I deliver the best product? And even if it's like, all right, um, you're doing too much on your own or, or maybe you're being too, um, I don't know, too selfish to so be like, oh, you're not getting a guest, uh, guest host. You're not doing this and that. I'm like, bro, how do I just deliver the best product I can give? You know what I'm saying? Simplicity. Exactly. And also, how do I like um, network a little more too? Mm-hmm. There was a, I made this post. Well, not, I didn't make the post, but I had reposted it too about, um, let me try to find it actually. It was about how much we think, um, where's it at? Uh, oh, no, that's not it, is it? Uh, oh, about, oh, Wallow had put it. I, don't know, I had put it about, basically, it was just, it was simple, like me sitting up and, uh, uh, Gilly, I don't know if you listen to that podcast, uh, Million Dollars Worth of Game with Gilly I love and Wallow. That one, bro. Gilly I love was talking Wallow. about, yeah, Gilly was talking about like, uh, you got to put that work in. A lot of people, you know, talk about they're doing this and that, but you're not putting in the work and you're not doing this and that, you know? And I remember I put right here, I was like, you think you think you're putting in that work in? Uh, well, I, I also think I'm putting in that work in. And guess what? We can do more. Like, no matter how much we think we're putting in the work in, or like, oh, you know, I'm, I know I'm doing this, I know I'm doing that. Like, I'm putting in the work, so I should be expecting this. I should mm-hmm. be expecting that. It's like, bro, don't expect it. You know what I'm saying? Put in more work. When you think you're putting in enough work, you're not. There's always something that you could do. Be putting in more work in, too. Like, even if that means, like you said, even though that doesn't necessarily mean pressing record and, and, and broadcasting, you can still be putting in the work on the outside to build a foundation to make it overall better, better product. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I'm trying to do, trying to still put more, more work in. Yeah, the, the work. The work doesn't stop. That work. Uh, yeah. Putting the work. Let's go. Put him in the dirt. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Uh, yeah, bro. Um, I appreciate you giving it on. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to... Uh, what are you looking at time-wise? You good on time? Yeah. I still want to do a few more things after mm-hmm. this. It's good. Um, okay. Y'all, we back. Okay? We back like we never left. Um, what's that line? What's that bar that Drake says on the, on that um, on that fucking... Uh, what is it? What's that song called? There, I ain't really left, but I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. I think it's a. Uh, uh, damn, what song is it? It's on the album with Twenty One. Twenty One Savage. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. The uh, damn, I forget the song, but he's he. What he's like? He's like, uh, I ain't really left, but I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. <laughs> I just thought about that one all randomly. But anyway, um, every Wednesday, check us out. Wednesday, seven p.m. Y'all stay safe. Peace.